Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Total War Warhammer 3 here today on the channel. Immortal Empires is finally here. And we're going to be starting a daily Empire campaign series playing as Carl Franz. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. Gotta say a massive thank you to the Creative Assembly for sending me early access and making this Let's Play possible. So a massive thank you to them. We now have the culmination of three games, multiple continents. There's over like 60 legendary lords and I've made the decision to play as the humans. We've got undead, we've got vampires, we've got goblins. And uh, I'm going to play as my favorite faction, the Empire. You've got to do it for your first series. But I am tempted to play a lot more Warhammer 3 now that Immortal Empires is now out. We can play as the High Elves. I'd love to play as Tyrion, oh, the Vampire Coast. So let me know uh, other campaigns you'd like to see. Also, feedback and suggestions, tips and tricks from you Warhammer connoisseurs. I'd really appreciate it. Right, let's get underway. Now is the time, men of the Empire, to unite... Rightio lads, you heard the Emperor, us men of the Empire must unite, and then I suppose summon the Elect Accounts. Now first things first, we have to deal with these pesky Empire Successionists, which are just to the south of our capital, Altdorf. So here is Karl Franz in Warhammer 3. How cool is that? Alright, so first things first, the main objective is to get the entirety of Reichland directly under Karl Franz's control. Then we want to bring the other elect accounts into our sphere of influence. Here is Karl Franz. Please take into consideration that this Immortal Empire's build is still in beta and development is still in progress. So you're welcome to pause, have a look at the skills and some of the details. Now, We've obviously got the Empire rework, which has been present uh, since Warhammer 2. So, a little bit of advice. I would recommend having roughly around about 2,000 gold in the bank at all times and about 1,000 prestige to counteract the random events that pop up. There's a little bit of RNG with the Empire campaign. So, to get the best possible outcome of those events, I really do recommend that advice. We're going to go with Tithe. And we're going to get a 10% growth and 2 control early on. I think that's definitely in our best interest. So if we ever want to confederate, we don't want other elect accounts declaring war on each other. We need to do that. So here are the short campaign victory conditions. The Barrow Legion and so forth. There's, got, there's a domination campaign, which is 200 and whopping 72 settlements. Look, we'll see how we go. I would love to do a full map completion, but I think that would be a little bit insane <laughs> to try and do. I don't know how long that would genuinely take, but I definitely wouldn't mind working my way from like A to Z of all the legendary lords. Yeah, let me know who you'd like me to let's play in the future. But we're going to be kicking things off with the tutorial battle. Let's go. Let's warm things up. Now, this battle is not overly too complicated. Uh, back in Warhammer 2, there's a lot of high ground, so the map has slightly changed. It does look like we're sort of... This is more of a, a Cathay-looking battle map, which is kind of cool. So we've got a nice little bit of high ground to our right. So we've currently got one unit of great swords, halberd swordsmen, two units of hand gunners. We currently have no archers, which is a little bit of a shame. We do have a Reichsguard and a mortar. So once our artillery starts bombarding and raining fire and death upon these successionists, they're going to be wanting to try and close the distance. All right, we'll try and get an angle. There's a slight high ground ele elevation with our gunners. And we'll try and release some of those mortar shells to soften them up. We'll get Karl Franz to lead from the front with Gal Moraz, even though he has, he's got it, even though we've got the quest item just yet. But the men of the Empire are slowly but surely advancing, closing the distance to try and dominate the field. We'll swing our Reichsguard around and we'll try and get a nice cycle charge. We might even be able to hit their archers, which are sitting a little bit back. All right, so looks like they're moving out some swordsmen to respond. All right, let's go for their archers to try and neutralize them. Now, let me know in the comments as well, army builds for this series. Early on, we want to get a bunch of archers, crossbows, swordsmen, and we might look to invest in some essentially great swords and stuff early on. Dude, can't wait to get stuck into the potential spell casters that we can get. And obviously the heavy artillery of the Empire, which will be our bread and butter of the series. My favourite artillery piece, the Hellstorm Rocket Battery. 
Dude, those things absolutely shred. Carl Franz is in currently in combat. Our Reich's kind of neutralized these skirmishes in the rear, and we want to try and start cycle charging against them. Now, Reichsguard are a little bit better in Warhammer 3. Ca Cavalry is generally better, slightly because of the buff. They're a lot more viable on the harder difficulties compared to Warhammer 2. But it's a little bit of a controversy. Some people like artillery and skirmisher spam as the Empire. I don't know. I don't mind having the occasional demigriff or Reichsguard unit just for a little bit of fun. Alright, we want to try and run down as many of them as possible, get those chevrons and experience up nice and high, and we'll allow our hand gunners to get some firing practice. So, nice little warm-up battle, nice little bit of terrain. Interesting that we don't start off with any archers of sort. Alright, decisive victory, just to speed things up. First engagement, 39 Empire lives have been lost after destroying the 600 or so. Swordsman did quite well. Um, our Reichstag guard actually did the best. Well, hmm. Do we want the experience? I think so. We can probably do without the slight replenishment because we can't actually reach Grunberg. Okay, we can. I think I'll, I want a slightly more amount of units if we can. We've also got the magical items and ancillaries. Uh, we can also salvage them at some point, which will be good. We've also unlocked some skills. We're going to start things off with getting a plus 5 movement range, because I eventually want to get lightning strike. Alright, back in Altdorf, we've got enough money to upgrade the village itself. We want to try and get Altdorf to at least tier 4, so we can get some higher quality units. So, to start things off, we can negotiate with a bunch of the elect accounts in and around us. And we'll try and get as much money as we can. But it's going to be interesting to see how well we do, where we spend expand and conquer. Will Kislev be able to hold against the Chaos Wastes to the north? We've also got to be a little bit proactive in protecting our elect accounts from either... Vampiric, Beastmen, so be it. or yes. Norsken Raiders, because you do get a pretty bad penalty if they do um, get destroyed. So we're going to slowly but surely try and confederate with the Elector Counts, and we're basically just going to try and go after the Separatists, maybe the Vampires, maybe Bretonia. We'll see how we go. Okay, after a little bit of negotiations on the diplomacy front, we can afford to get some more units in our build. I think I want to go with archers early on. We've got plenty of swordsmen, halberds, even that great sword, but being able to have some armor hitting, piercing skirmish would be the play. Empire archers aren't actually too bad. Um, I prefer crossbows, but even in settlements, sometimes they're better to arc their shots up and over the walls compared to crossbows, but we'll see how we go. But the turn timer is a little bit long, even though it's like powering through it. So depending on your PC, it might struggle. 273 factions to power on through. That will significantly drop, I, I imagine, once we get deep into the campaign, because not um, every faction, of course, survives. All right, so it's going to be a close victory in Grunberg, and we are only going to lose potentially one swordsman. And it is a siege at the end of the day. Mostly swordsmen, spearmen, and crossbowmen. And it's a walled cinema. So we're going to auto-resolve this one. We'll take the halberd hit, which is a little bit annoying, but so be it. And we'll siege and take Grunberg out. And yes. we'll look to bring in Ubersreich, Ilhart, and I believe the fortress of Helmgart as well which can be a little bit tricky to take, and we're going to want to try and take it soon. Hopefully the Dwarfs or some other faction doesn't take it, because it is a crucial fortress. Uh, we want to reduce army recruitment as well with Karl Franz, by the way. Okay, so Altdorf has expanded, and we want to 
upgrade our barracks to a rally field so we can get crossbowmen and replace those halberds and eventually bring more infantry in. Roughly one about, ideally if I could get like five great swords, the rest made up of skirmishes, wizards, and artillery. But it's just going to be a little while before we can get crazy artillery pieces like the Hellstorm rocket battery. Uh, we probably could build a blacksmith. That's probably not a bad idea. At the moment, on the economical front, we're making just shy of under 2,000 gold per turn. We could increase that with clay pits, however, and being able to trade variously. Our prestige is only 250. I'd like to increase that. So, we're just on the doorstep of Ubersreich. We want to try and take this, because there's a chance that... I think we can get Godric and Felix pretty early on if we did build a pub here or something. But there is an interesting garrison here that we can get. The nation calls. Once we fully repair it and bring things back to normal life, there's like, uh, I think you can even have like a dwarf and an elf. <laughs> and uh, there's like a um, Vermintide uh, reference, I believe. So we'll try and take Ilhart now. The Empire's secession, secession, I can't even say the word properly, secessionists <laughs> mostly have their power in Helmgart, and they do have a military force there. So I would like to try and get all of Reichland under our control, but we might have to bait Uber's Reich. We'll see how we go if we move out. Oh, here we go. Our first piece of events here. So, okay, unfortunately, we've got a lose lose situation. Alright, we're going to mobilize out of Ubersreich. And let's bring in a fields as well. We want to try and go with growth and finance. Because then obviously we can get more military forces. Therefore we can conquer more lands. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you like me to expand and conquer. I do want to try and play realistic. Role play as best as we can. I do want to try and strive to bring all of the elect accounts under my direct control, mostly by confederation. So Sterling demands a region. Oh god, this has been super unlucky. So I suppose we allow Sterling to gain influence. So they're still holding it, Helmgard. Now, I'm going to take a risk here and move to Ilhart. They could uh, retake Ubersreich. However, I actually wouldn't mind that because then we would be able to essentially surround and neutralize the army in there. Because Ubersreich is a far easier settlement to take than the fortress in the, the Axe Pass. So, we're slowly but surely trying to get a full stack before we can mount an assault on the fortress. We've got an abundance of archers and swordsmen now. We've also got the entirety of Reichland under our control, so we can install an edict, getting more growth to continue. Tech-wise, let's see what we're working with. So, we could potentially go down grain silos. Um, obviously, money is always a fantastic idea. But, hmm, maybe getting more ammunition might be a smart play. Alrighty, things are looking good. It's probably time now to recruit a secondary army. Arch electors I do quite like, but it does largely depend on the trait. Oh, okay, that, well that's just settled it then. We can go with the General of the Empire. Rizard von Liebwitz. I like the sound of you. A good royal Sort of, and loyal Reichlin name. Alright. Let's go. Oh shit, Hockland has been destroyed. Fuck. Um, okay. Yeah, look at that. I think it's just minus two. Damn. As I was making plans and preparations to go against the Empire Successionists at Helmgard. Now, we've got a full stack. Order Resolve is not in our favour. We'll try and siege it out where we can. We do want to try and take the fortress as quick as we can, because quite frankly, I don't want anyone else to hold it. Be that me, dwarves or vampires of the Barrow Legion. 
So we'll bring up this secondary force. Okay, so it is in range. So let's move you in. We're still currently sieging out Hans. Oh, okay. Oh, I might have stuffed up here. Even though it's going to be a, a close victory auto resolve. Unfortunately, this reinforcing army has actually been intercept, intercepted by the enemy. But it's still going to act as a siege. Hmm, okay. I thought potentially at that point they might sally out, which would be good. But we're going to have to siege them out. So here's the Battle of Helmgart. Really cool looking settlement. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until our reinforcements get here. So we might have just made the siege just slightly more difficult for us. Because we're not all here just to purely send it up there. But here's Helmgart, the ancient fortress in the pass here. And we need to bring it back under Empire control. As the secessionists from here were able to cause terror and carnage throughout Reichland. So, it's going to tell me a minute before those reinforcements come in. So luckily we're early enough in the campaign that they're not sort of peppering, bombarding me with artillery or missiles from this range. So we'll wait for Carl Franz and the boys to rock up and then we'll march straight up to the gate of Helmgard and try and take this city. Ask them nicely first, <laughs> but then ultimately try and take it. Wait for everyone to slowly but surely trickle on in. And then we'll move up. So now, with those addition, additional reinforcements and army we called from Altdorf, we should have enough to take Helmgard. Bunch of crossbows in here now. And archers. Alrighty. Let's advance with our infantry. Make sure they're not running, because we don't want to exhaust them too much. And let's divide our skirmishers slightly and angle them. For example, crossbows and one archer unit can go here, while the other archers can go uh, here, for example. I actually don't mind if they run, because they kind of want to... I want, kind of want to allow them to be first to get either hit by skirmishers, and maybe draw some of the fire away from our valuable infantry. Because I don't really fear for the lives of our archers. They're not going to have any magical machinations or spells or whatever the like they can throw on us. But Carl Franz, after leveling up, is now on his trusty steed, which is an automatic upgrade now, which is interesting. Can't wait to eventually get his main mount, Deathclaw. Okay, so already the secessionist towers are hitting us, trying to soften up. Let's speed things up slightly to hopefully put the last of the secessionists down and out. Okay, my artillery should really move up. If they can. There seems to already be like huge craters here, which is interesting. I wonder what caused that. Maybe surrounding the city. It's like <laughs> our damage from our uh, previous bombardment. So our archers have made their way just below and shy of the wall. We'll try and get them to arc their shot and uh, get things on over. As Carl Franz has charged up to the gate and is going to try and bring it down single handedly, wielding the Warhammer. Gal Moraz. Sigmar's heir. Getting stuck into it. So we obviously want to try and bring other Empire legendary lords in as quick as we can. Definitely want to prioritize Belthazar Gelt. 
Hell, if he even gets threatened by various greenskins in the south, we might have to go and save him. <laughs> Which, uh, we might need to do. Go save him down in Nam. Alright. The gateway has been destroyed, so we actually don't need to throw all our infantry on the walls, which is good. We're going to be able to send a couple straight through the gate itself. Currently 60% in our favor. They've softened us up slightly. And hopefully, I would say we have skirmisher supremacy on them. We'll try and soften them up from the outside. Hopefully we can push some of their infantry further back, so then we can move our archers onto the walls, walls and fire down from the walls with impunity. But the brave men of the Empire and Reichland are about to storm through the city gates of Helmgard. And they're going to be intercepted incredibly quickly. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to expand and conquer factions you'd like me to take out. Because basically now we've got to think of who we sort of go after. Do we go against the vampire counts which are definitely on the target one of our older enemies we obviously want to try and bring all the elector counts under our control we could potentially go after Bretonia because also we've got to think about uh, climate suitability and sort of potential territories like I don't mind Bretonia I do not mind <laughs> uh, Leon Leon Coeur of La Bretonia. But he does have some really suitable settlements for me. <laughs> uh, same with the Wood Elves as well. They do have a settlement, I do believe, just north of us. So I feel like a war with the Wood Elves is potentially inevitable. However, we will need to make alliances before the various hordes of chaos come. So, I think we need to ally with certain factions that we can't take their territory. Potentially the dwarves might be the best place. But also, in saying that as well, we kind of want to have good alliances with other human factions in settlements that we could potentially own, like Kislev, but we, I wouldn't mind getting access to some of their units via military alliances and outposts. Dude, could you imagine an army build with Demigriff Knights, Reichsguard and Bear Riders? Oh my god, what an idea. That'd be sick. But I can't wait to produce a bunch of Warhammer 3 content for you guys. And I really can't wait to see how far and Sort of what twists and turns this Empire series has to go. So, make sure to support it. Leave a like and sub. I'd appreciate it if you haven't already. If you want to see future episodes. And depending on sort of your feedback and suggestions. We'll sort of determine how long this series is. I want to try and go as long as we can. As long as you guys are enjoying it and supporting it. Alright, so we are currently fiercely fighting in and around the streets of Helmgard. We're doing quite well. Okay, it might be safe in some pockets now of the enemy wall to move up on. Because, like you can see there, we want to try and move something like this. Because quite often, you can turn offensive sieges to your advantage if there's space to get up on that enemy wall. So we're currently cycle charging with our Reichsguard here. Karl Franz is at 50% health. So far we currently outnumber the enemy defenders by about 300. So the tick rate is on our side. However, our infantry is taking a serious battering. Like I said, Helmgart is quite a hard settlement to take. So we do have to be a little bit cautious as we move on in. It can be a tough one. 
But thankfully, we can destroy the enemy succession. I can't say that word. I don't know why. <laughs> Secessionists. Separatists. I think it's an easier word for me to say. Um, early on, before they sort of gain more strength and renowned throughout the empire. Artillery's here helping out. Would like cons uh, would like considerably more. Let's try and get more of these guys up. But so far we're doing well. I've got my gunners further at the back. It's probably not a bad idea to actually bring them up. Because they could cause some significant damage if they can get a clear shot now. Nice. So it looks like we've neutralized their cavalry. And we're still causing carnage. Our mortars are still raining shots. They're starting to retreat slightly. And look at this, this is brilliant. Our archers there are peppering the enemy with pretty much no threat. Artillery supremacy over the top. And now it's swung to a good 600 men we outnumber them by. Now they do have enemy towers within sight, so we are going to be taking various attrition. I just want to try and focus on the units themselves, because although the mortars can probably reach, some of those archers aren't going to be able to hit those enemy towers that are really just ripping us to shreds. Obviously in Warhammer 3, we have the building mechanic now, which adds another further dynamic to sieges. And I can't wait to see some of the new siege maps as well. Them being a, a lot larger, particularly in some uh, old region capitals as well. But so far, it's swung to about 90%. There's only a couple more units holding out. And that's it. They have capitulated. Nice. Let's uh, end the battle there. A close one, like the AO predicted. So, we lost about 700. I wish I could see Carl Franz's casualty sustained and inflicted. So, although our infantry did get intercepted, we came out with a really nice win. Nearly 200 apiece with some of those skirmishes. The Reichstag Guard did incredibly well In the name of to add to that. Alright, let's loot and occupy Helmgard, and that should be the last of the Empire Secessionists. Nice. A quest oh, what's this? Issued, mighty Lord, a great adventure beckons. Be wary, though, for while the potential rewards are great. So too are the perils. Okay, we have an opportunity to get the Reichland Runefang, where we'll have to teleport north to fight some uh, Norsken raiders that are going to land off the coast here. Um, I think that's something we want to do. Oh, this is annoying. Money is power. So we'll be able to get one Imperial Authority. Oh, we're just a little bit shy, which is incredibly unfortunate. Damn it. Well, there might be a beastman threat, um, depending. It does seem like Kazrak the One-Eyes there. So what's going on here in Marienburg? I think we want to make a, probably a play for them, because technically they're not a part of the elect accounts. They're sort of their own and independent principality. So I think what we'll do, before we make plans and preparations, we'll do this quest up in the north to try and get the Runefang, our first battle against Norska. Now, I've got to make sure I do a lot of these quests. You can get a little bit overwhelmed with conquering territory and forget about them from time to time. But here we go. Let's get stuck into this quest battle. It's definitely going to be well worth it. And we get a speech. Hear me. The celestial wizards read the portents true. Norse raiders land on Nordland shores. We have marched many miles. But there is no distance so great that I would not gladly march it to face this, our ultimate foe! 
I have refused the honor of wielding the blade of our forebears thus far. I was not worthy. But should we survive this day? Should we drive the ruinous tribes back across the sea, then, with your blessing, I will pick up the Reichland Rune Fang and use it to bleed our foes, to carve my way through Sigmar's enemies. Are you with me, men of the Empire? For when the Northmen come, they will attack hard, as their despicable gods demand. We must be ready to push them back, thrust them into the sea, in defense of the Empire! Okay. Now, I can't really remember this battle it's been a while from what i can remember it's just like various norskin waves so they've landed in nordland and we've essentially got to defend it so we've made a nice compact formation trying to use the terrain the best of our ability and we've obviously got artillery supremacy against these savage Norskins. We'll try and soften them up before they clash upon our front line. Now, we do have to be a little bit careful because they will have cavalry and flanking supremacy. Our archers and skirmishers are going to get some shots off. We'll try and invert... ...our infantry. To bring in the classic Simsy Fold. Which will protect us slightly. And we'll just try and soften them up as best we can. We want them to charge at us. Just trying to rotate here with my cavalry, trying to match theirs. It's probably not a bad idea to try and lock down those marauders. Nice charge here to pin them down. They did manage to get a little bit of their skirmisher fire off. And it's probably not a bad idea to move Karl Franz on the left-hand side as well. To try and go after and fight in combat with their enemy general. Our great swords are engaging. Now... Our Empire Swordsmen are going to struggle a little bit, going toe-to-toe -to -toe exactly with the brave men of Norska. However, what we have in abundance that the Barbarian Scum have, they don't have, um, is artillery and skirmishes, which is going to really try and carry the day. If we can try and burn them up, crisp them, and get those armor-piercing shots off, the better. We seem to be maintaining our line well, as the Reichsguard come charging on in. Nice. Karl Franz, currently dealing with the enemy Warlord. But, four or five units of the Norskin infantry have capitulated. Let's give chase, and throw them back into the sea from whence they came. Oh, it's a little bit close there. <laughs> That artillery fire was clipping a couple of my own infantry. Hold on, fellas. Alright, let's rotate some of you around here. And let's try and flank. Some of them have recovered and have come back. Let's just try and get a, a close shot here. Nice! Wasn't the most high-octane charge, but... As we saw the Norskins flee and fly on back, it had enough sort of... Venom about it, I suppose. Alright, let's uh, give chase with the infantry this time and allow Karl Franz and our cavalry to just try and mop up as many of them as we can. Karl Franz, the man, the myth, the legend, the emperor himself getting stuck into the thick of it, which is always what you like to see. Level 7 now. Alright, we've pushed them to the beaches. Oh, here we go. Yet more of the enemy emerge from their ship. Okay. Uh, okay, I might have stuffed up here. Hang on. Oh, 
you've got to be kidding me. If they deployed in the forest, they must have snuck around from a cove or something. Alright, let's move everyone back. Oh, damn it. I gave my infantry the command there. Hang on. I did tell you. It's been a while since I've played this battle. I can't remember it at all. Alright, let's form this. I thought they'd at least be deploying in front of us. Alright, has slightly complicated things. Uh, some of the enemy that we were giving chase to have recovered. I suppose with newfound news of their allied Norskin compatriots coming on in. Quickly now, come on. Just need to move our infantry up. Now, some of our skirmishers are going to be able to release their shots. Nice. Couple decent volleys there by the archers. Against the Norskan greatswords. Oh, no, no, no. What the hell? They're like retreating into the mortars. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. And they've recovered as well. Well, Carl Franz has to quickly recover. And try and help out those mortars. Ah, oh, shit. Because they were retreating, I didn't really think they were a threat. Alright. Wasn't too damage intensive or costly, thankfully. But we'll speed things up slightly. They are recovering incredibly well. So we need to continue to defend ourselves against the enemy. But we weren't the most sort of favoured to win this one, so... We'll see how we go. Still got plenty of crossbows. Still got plenty of archers. That's where our strengths lie in this early army build. Yet, the swordsmen with their shields, okay. Against Norskin and essentially human factions, which we've only really faced. But if we ever come to blow with a potential Warhammer 2 faction, things might become slightly more complicated. But we're doing okay for now. Still trying to skirmish the axe infantry there. Now they are broken. And luckily we've swung around. And we've got a solid position. Alright, more reinforcements are trickling on in. Could move my handgunners into a better quality position. Maybe joining the front line to help out. And everyone else still has a lot of health. Oh, oh no. And now another wave has come on in. Okay. Um, we have to might... We might have to make a real defensive formation. Hang on. I'm going to divide half of the infantry. And try and make a triangle or something. I would love to make a noob box if we could. But I just don't know if we've got enough infantry. Hang on. We just need to rotate... the infantry to protect us from all sides and we also need to make sure the uh, missile units don't get flanked alright well this wave seems a lot more potent oh they brought in a spellcaster that's gonna complicate things so this is probably the third and final wave probably the toughest potentially alright come on guys reform the line you got to give it to Norska. <laughs> they are really adopting this sort of cool guerrilla warfare style of tactic. Carl Franz is at about 40 slash 30% ish health. So it's something I have to keep an eye on. As well, what's, what's done a lot of damage to us is they've brought in a lot of lords. Oh, and they are really bombarding us here with our archers. They're really softening us up. Everyone's just a bit fatigued and exhausted because we're essentially fighting three armies now. All right, let's try and stop their wizard, who's causing us a lot of damage. We'll just try and pin him in place with our cavalry, and then we'll allow the skirmishers and everyone else to work on out. All right, we need to get our gunners in here. Okay, try and cycle charge. On the infantry that are getting held. Now we'll get all my crossbowmen to focus all their fire on the wizard. Because uh, they're really focusing me. Oh, Carl Franz. Shit, shit, shit. We've also got to move him out because we can't really afford 
for him to be defeated. I wonder if we lose the battle if we lose him, potentially. Because it is a quest battle, so it's slightly different. We need to get our gunners in action. Alright, so the balance of power has swung a lot more in the Norskins favour. Just got to watch out for that power shift. Yeah, we need to keep Carl Friends alive to get those leadership and various bonuses in his Aurora. So, come on, let's uh, get some shots off here. Let's advance, Carl Franz. And we've got some swordsmen there just sitting idly by. Alright, come on. Need to get your shots off here. It's going to be a close one. This might end up being a Pyrrhic victory in the end. And unfortunately, once again, our mortars have been attacked. Maybe just slightly move you out. We'll get the gunners to focus on. There, uh, Lord. Oh, nice. And we're really putting the pump on him. Oh, God. My infantry is absolutely shot to shit. Fuck, hang on. Oh, there we go. Alright, let's uh, move you here. He's recovered. Oh, nice. That was a really nice volley. And now the entirety of the Norskan force is in a full retreat. Brilliant. Hey. Oh, I ended up being a Pyrrhic victory in the end. My god. That was a tough one. You can't really sleep on quest battles. They outnumbered us slightly. Reichsguard, well over 300 kills. The Great Saw, it's uh, carrying once again. I would have liked to see the skirmishes get slightly more, but they did all right. Particularly against three armies. Just the amount of agents and lords is what really um, cost us a bit. It is a bit tricky. Usually if there's more than like three lords when you're fighting with one army, um, that's what really makes it difficult. Not necessarily the... Uh, numerical supremacy of their infantry and stuff. It's like, early on, Carl Franz only has a certain amount of health points and damage output. Speaking of Carl, uh, we probably want to try and upgrade our missile strength where we can. And we've also unlocked uh, a couple of magical items from the global pool. So we should be able to get Dragon Tooth in. And Beast or Beast Slayer if we want. I think we'll go with Beast Slayer. Oh, here we go. Beastman attack an Elector State. So this is one of the dilemmas I was talking about. So that costs two thousand gold. So we can send a military or we can hire mercenaries. We want prestige, because we can eventually spend that to confederate with another elector count. So we will be sending the 2000 and it seems like Balthazar Argelt's forces under the command of this captain here I think the Golden Order should be alright in a defensive siege against Beastmen so we can auto resolve that and we also can pardon the captives which will allow us to get a thousand back because we don't need the experience with those units we're not going to be able to use them at all Okay, so I think volley fire, reload reduction. That's probably not a bad idea. Okay, so we've got a beastman horde just north of Ilhart, and we have the opportunity to, once and for all, put Kazrak the One Eye in the fucking ground. So let's do it. Let's take his other eye. And, uh, I suppose we'll send his head to Toddy. Now, they have a lot of flanking units here. Like, we're going to struggle against these chariots and such. We're actually not favoured to win this one. So just looking at the topography of this battle map, I think we're better off pushing further down the ravine here because there's a river crossing that we can hold. 
which will slightly deter them. So we'll try and move everyone around. Now, unfortunately, their zone of control, especially on that right-hand side, is probably going to beat us to that river crossing. So we'll try and get there as quick as we can. We'll absolutely double time it. Yeah, so it's like a... Okay, so most of it's dried up, but it's like a small river here. If we can sort of hold that, there even seems to be a little bit of high ground. We should be able to nullify and slow down any beastman fast-moving chariot or... Essentially a... Uh, Warhound unit. Alright, we'll try and move our Reichsguard to try and... Chitin. Just protect everyone moving around. We are double timing. Now, the slowest moving piece is the artillery, so... Gotta be a little bit careful here. Hopefully, Karl Franz and the Reichsguard should be able to stop everyone here. But the Beastmen have a lot of speed about them. Alright, so let's get stuck in. The Reichsguard are gonna engage. They're hounds. And Karl Franz is going to deal with the chariots as well. Everyone's still double timing. We'll get them to an enable guard mode. And I also want to turn off skirmisher mode. Because once we're over that river, I don't want them to be moving. Nice. We've crushed the hounds. But now we're actually fighting their war herd. So we do have to be a little bit careful. They've got an ungore axe infantry here. Nice little charge. Go back to the spearmen. Yeah, just look how quick and lightning fast they are. They've got some really nice speed about them, the beastmen. And early on, you do have to be a little bit careful going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the beastmen faction. They are actually quite strong. We seem to be already skirmishing them over this river. So this will just try and slow them down. If we can get them bogged down in... The uh, river, the brilliant. Look at that. The better. Look at that. Perfect. They only just made it over the river. Now they have to go back. And now they're being capitulated. Perfect. We'll form up in a defensive position. And we'll use our skirmisher supremacy to whittle them down. Because essentially, flanking them trying to flank us really, really hard and activating our skirmish mode would probably be the downfall of us in this battle. Because they do have speed and agility. But here is Kazrak And his war herd pushing on over. And already, as you can see, they just get slowed down trying to push through that river. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get the mortar over the river. So, that kind of sucks. That's a pretty huge loss. It's really going to delay any massive sieges we've got coming up. Especially with I got plans to try and go after Marienburg. But now the war herd has finally caught up to us. We're also just trying to delay them from even crossing the river. We'll give us more skirmishes. Give our skirmishes more time to whittle them down. Now they do have some Minotaurs here as they're trying to charge on in. And they've got Kazwak himself. Now, Karl Franz is at half, half health, so we do have to be a little bit careful with him. We'll allow our Reichsguard to go after their skirmishes. But here come the Beastmen. An old ancient enemy. The Empire battling it up, battling it out against the Beasts once again. I do want to try and get Kazrak's trait pretty early on. We've only just stabilized Reichland. We've thrown back Norsken Raiders. And now, as soon as we've come back after briefly leaving our ho home, Kazrak has reared his ugly head again. But hopefully for the last time. Most of their forces are now in a retreat. And although we lost the mortar, we saved many Imperial lives. We did lose 100 after that battle. But we did manage to crush, crush Kazrak and the majority of his war herd. Which is fantastic. Close victory even then after that. So we didn't lose the mortars after that. Oh, nice. They were crushed and made to flee. But they didn't take... 
as many of them out. Alright, let's try and run down them. And, oh nice, we've managed to gain access to a bunch of regiments of renown. Alright, so we'll give chase and run down the last of them as well, gaining another amount of valuable experience and Kazrak's faction has now been destroyed. Perfect. Carl's gone up in skills slightly, so we're still a little bit away from Death Claw. He has an Imperial Pegasus now, and we've also got Beast Scourge now, which gives us a 20% ambush defense chance. Thanks to Kazrak. I've managed to get some Death Jacks, which are a regiment of renowned archer unit. They do have magical missile ability, and I also managed to pick up a regiment of renowned swordsmen. And we'll try and get a total of 20 units as well. Nice. Oh, and we've got a, another mission unlocked against the Greenskins to get Gal Moraz, which I think we'll do at the start of the next episode. So unfortunately, guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the first episode of the Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires Carl Franz Empire Campaign. Stay tuned for episode 2, coming out the exact same time tomorrow, where we're going to be continuing this daily Empire series. Make sure to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new, if you haven't already. Uh, let me know feedback and suggestions, tips and tricks in the comments. Would really appreciate all your feedback and suggestions. And I've also got to say a massive thank you to the Creative Assembly for sending me early access and making this Let's Play possible. So a massive thank you to, the, to them. My name has been Simsy. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.